Stone Age Ireland. Just south of Coleraine, a great ridge of basalt lies in the path of the River Ban. After a serene passage from Loch Beg, the river is funnelled between bluffs to cascade in rapids through weirs and sluices into a long estuary leading to the Atlantic Ocean. Here, at Mount Sandal, where waters draining off nearly half of the surface of Ulster meet the tide, archaeologists began to unearth evidence of the very first human presence in Ireland. In 1972, worked flints had been brought to the surface, close to Mount Sandal, when land was being prepared for a new housing estate. Then, in 1973, archaeologists began what seemed like a routine investigation of the area, only to discover, after the carbon dating of charred hazelnut shells, that human beings had lived there between 7,000 and 6,000 BC. So, the generally accepted date of the arrival of people in Ireland had been put back by more than a thousand years. The site was meticulously excavated over five years and its contents sieved, sifted and chemically analysed by specialists. Their findings cast a unique shaft of light back over nine thousand years on life in a Mesolithic or Middle Stone Age camp in Ireland. In an artificially enlarged hollow, the remains of four large huts were found. Long saplings had been driven into the ground in a rough circle and bent over and lashed together to form a domed roof. Lighter branches may have been interwoven to add strength and rigidity. Each hut was then covered with bark or deer hide and reinforced against the north wind with grass turfs that had been lifted from the inside. A single hut, around six metres wide, gave shelter to perhaps a dozen people gathered around a bowl-shaped hearth in the centre. The falls and rapids by Mount Sandwell must have been a majestic sight. Below them, in early summer, salmon waited in thousands for a flood to take them upstream to spawn. And sea bass foraged at high tide in pursuit of crabs, flounder and smolts. Scale-shaped flints found in abundance had almost certainly been set in poles to harpoon these fish, together with myriads of eels dropping down from Loch Ney in autumn. Autumn, too, was the season for gathering hazelnuts. These were supplemented by crabapple, goosegrass, vetches, and the seeds of water lilies. These seeds are like popcorn when dropped into hot fat. In midwinter, wild pigs fattened on the abundant hazelnuts began their rutting. Male yearlings, driven out by mature boars, were vulnerable to hunting parties armed with flint-tipped spears and arrows. This too was the time for trapping forest birds and overwintering wildfowl. Flint had to be carried to Mount Sandal from as far away as the beaches of Port Rush in County Antrim and downhill in County Londonderry around 20 miles away. At a tool working area on the site, large pieces of flint were roughly fashioned into picks and axes, while the smaller blades struck from these were shaped into knives, arrowheads, hide scrapers, awls and harpoon flakes. One axe still had traces of red ochre on its surface, a tantalising hint that these people painted themselves on ceremonial occasions. The men and women of the Middle Stone Age moved about in bands from place to place. Most dwelling sites were on the coast. They were concentrated around Strangford Lock, along the Antrim coast, around Dublin and Wicklow, the Dingle Peninsula and Galway Bay. In these places, shellfish, and limpets in particular, formed a central part of the diet. For at least 3,000 years, these hunter-gatherers lived undisturbed apart from perhaps by brown bears or wolves. Few would have survived beyond the age of 40, and the human population of the whole island wouldn't have been more than a couple of thousand, the same number of people who live in a town like Saintfield or Castlewellyn today. Certainly, they left little trace on the landscape. During those 3,000 years, the rain fell ever more persistently. A contrast between cold winters and hot summers became less marked, and oak, alder and elm began to tower over the hazel. Pine and birch woods covered the hills and mountains, and in all this time, the early inhabitants' only technological advance was an increase in the size of the stone tools they made. 
And that's a hint about tomorrow's episodes. We come to the Stone Age. The first two episodes of A Short History of Ireland were written by Dr Jonathan Barden, with dramatisations provided by Francis Tumulty, James Green and Richard Dormer. The producer was Alison Finch.